Hey there, we've got um, Robert Michael here on the line. We're going to have a conversation with him about uh, his uh, ongoing efforts to educate the population in the law and their rights and the mechanisms that are out there to, to utilize for your benefit and your protection from overreach of government. And uh, I've known Robert for, I don't know, must be what close to 15 years now, probably. <laughs> yeah. And Feels like it. <laughs> yeah, we've both been through uh, been through the mill, and we've uh, gone down a lot of roads. And this is uh, the latest uh, road that uh, Robert is on. And I'm excited about some of the stuff he has to share. And I'm looking forward to uh, hearing it, sharing it with you. So, Robert, tell us about your uh, latest uh, incarnation of uh, what you're teaching on the web. So, uh, houseofmarcus.org is our website, and what we're basically trying to help people understand is the deeper level of uh, the entire legal system and economic system around the world, which, you know, people aren't looking at. They're looking at COVID, they're looking at oppression, they're looking at tyranny, they're looking at all these things, but they're not looking at the financial aspect. Um, and the whole thing is all financial. COVID is just a financial debt collection uh, practice. That's all it is. Um, so we are trying to help people who are just waking up to evolve further as fast as they can so that they can get up to the level where like you and I are, we understand these things because it will help them protect themselves, right? So we want to teach them uh, basic principles of law and things like that. And then we want them to understand what's really going on. So when House of Marcus takes a step, we take a step as one body. In other words, when I develop something and do something and the results are good and we all see it and we know it, um, I pass that information on to the members and then they're more than welcome to take those steps as well. And we put it behind the private veil so that nothing is, um, you know, uh, we're not accountable in the public. We're not doing anything with the public. So the government overreach can't extend to the private. So everything stays private. Um, our fee is just a one fee. There's no three levels of membership. It's one fee. All our content's there. We may, and it's not even a fee, sorry. It's a donation, monthly donation. And we may ask for another donation for certain uh, templates that I might create. But so far, um, we have a few on there and we're probably going to zero those out at one point and just all the document templates and stuff will be free. Right now, all our COVID docs are free. Um, there's no donation, suggested donation. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're doing. And I've connected with a lot of people around the world, around the country. Um, we're helping people understand what private member organizations are, trust, uh, churches, what they're about and, and how they can be utilized to, you know, continue serving each other in the private. So we're really looking at building like all these private mechanisms is what we're doing. And it, it seems to be just taking off like wildfire. It's really cool. A um, lot of people waking up to to understand this stuff. So yeah, that's we, where we're at. And, and we've both been in uh, this for a long time. And I've witnessed, and I know you're witnessing it too, that there's uh, a lot of fresh faces, a lot of people who are just waking up to the very, very first time that the law actually affects their life and maybe they should learn something about it. So yep. um, it's a little bit of a struggle to catch people up but at the same time yes. they don't have to go through all the crap we went to because we've sorted some things out along the way so it's getting easier to teach people because we've we've kind of cleared the decks of a lot of the theories and crap that didn't work and now we're teaching people more of what actually does work what is there a is there a main focus for for instance if you categorize people you have literally the employee crowd and then you have the business people crowd and then you have the people doing business with people crowd. Do you have um, information for each of those? Is there common information for all of them? Yeah, well, I've got a message for everybody across the board. <laughs> and that is come out of her, my people, right? Because this is all biblical. So when we follow the Bible, the Bible tells us what we need to do. We need to stop messing around with public, meaning public organizations. If you're a businessman, so let's break that down. If you're a businessman, then you're probably going to want to form some sort of private type business. And there's challenges to that, right? Because people that you're doing business with may not really understand what that is. So there's challenges to all three of those, those categories. People who are employed, you know, they're going to fire you, man. I mean, they are going to do whatever they can to fire you if you're not getting the vaccination. 
And that goes back to what you and I know about the system and how the system is set up and how they control people through their SSN and their or their SIN number and all that stuff. So it's unfortunate, right? Because people are saying, how do I save myself? So right now the employee people, I say, look, if you're not getting jabbed or tested or anything like that, you can probably prolong your your uh, extinguishment at that employee's employer uh, position, but that's probably the best you're going to get. Now you could do like what we've done with certain documents is we've set up we've set them up so that a really good attorney could litigate for somebody. But you know, and I, you and I know how that works. I mean, you spend thousands of thousands of dollars and you really get nowhere. And then it's almost like you know who how. Is that even worth it? Because your job probably doesn't even pay you enough to hire an attorney to do that. So it's a tough situation for employees right now. It really, really is. So we encourage people to start thinking outside the box. Go back to your uh, pre-public indoctrination from the public school and start thinking, being creative. Be creative. How can you create something for yourself? What can you offer the world? With opportunities online right now, there's so many things to do that people will pay for. Right. And then once you get income coming in or funding, if you will, then you can hire people and so on and so forth. So my recommendation for people is to do that behind the private wall, which would be like a private member organization or something. But um, there's those people. And then uh, the independent people are already ahead of the game. As far as I'm concerned, they just need to be structured and understand how to operate and, and live their lives. Okay, so one of the key things I wanted to, wanted you to cover in this conversation was the private men, member association. Can you explain what that is, a little bit about its structure, and uh, how it in some way protects you from government uh, intervention? Yeah. So um, as you know, you know, I, I subscribe to the idea that the government could sue anybody for anything at any time, regardless of the paper you have put in place. So we want to keep that perspective. But to optimize that protection, number one, we need to be educated. And if we're going to uh, be educated, number two, we want to know what staying in the private realm is. And the reason being is government, if you read all the statutes of codes and stuff, they, they have a duty to provide for the public peace, the public welfare, the public health and safety, right? But that's all public. They don't have a duty to anything private. We just don't know what's private and what's public. So in setting up a private member, what people are calling private member associations, I'm gonna kind of move away from the word association because that kind of fits a lot of their statutes and I wanna use wording that doesn't fit. Again, just one more layer of protection, if you will. So I'm going to say private member organization, private member club. Um, if you notice, like a lot of ordinances and stuff, if you read them, at least I remember reading the one in Kansas City from the symposium when they tried to shut that down a month ago. And I read the, the ordinance and I said, look, it says private clubs are excluded right here from the ordinance, that they can't enforce it on a private club. And the theory behind that is that the government can only regulate what's public. Now, one of the key elements that I always use in a defense mode is, hey, you're a municipal corporation. I've got your Dun & Bradstreet report right here, which is fine. That's totally legal. You can have a municipal corporation. But the problem there is if you're going to contract with me as a private man, then we need a contract, number one. Number two, you have certain delegated policing authorities under the constitutional construct, which is a higher office than your municipal corporation. So, you know, we, I just need you to clear up some ambiguities here that, that you're coming at me like you're the, the constitutionally constructed government when you're not. You're just a municipal corporation, according to your Dun & Bradstreet. Your jurisdiction is different. You can't act outside of your corporate uh, your corporate bylaws, which is ultra virus. Uh, so I get into that whole bit as part of my defense and basically saying to them, where does your public statutes lay out and authorize you to administrate or to do anything with my private property? And you know, I've said this for a long time, but now I'm getting really good at solidifying that. Um, and they usually back off because they can't prove that. And then what I do is I bind them to some agreements and liability uh, in that same you know, that same notice, if you will. Uh, so the private member associations, if you will, for lack of a better word, is a group of people that come together for a common purpose and they set up a whole set of articles of um, 
association, just like article, articles of a court, uh, incorporation. And from there, then they operate in only within their membership. In other words, you can't go out in the street. Let's say, let's say you want to take a restaurant and turn that into a private member association. You have to be mindful of your contracts. You have to be mindful of who is a member and what constitutes a member. So you have a membership agreement. So a group of people form an association. They have articles. Then they have a membership agreement for people that want to come in to the association or the organization. They have a set of bylaws, which tells them how they're going to function their association. And then they invite people in. Well, you know, we, we'd love to say, uh, come on in and have dinner, but we can't unless you're a member. But become a member. Here, let us educate you about that, right? So they come to the door, you're a member, you pay your $5, whatever it is. You don't even need to pay $5. Maybe their, their dinner is the membership fee. I mean, you could structure it that way. But one of the things that people have trouble with is, well, you know, I'm leasing this building where I have my restaurant and, you know, the state is telling the landowner that they have to do this, that, and the third. Now they're leaning on me. So again, it's, it always becomes this, where's your contract and which contract is tied to the state? Who are you dealing with that has a contract with the state? And a contract with the state is a registration, uh, you know, license, a permit. You know, private member associations don't need any of that. They don't need licensing and permitting because they're private and they're not doing anything against the law. Now, you could say, well, it's against the law not to have a license. Well, that just says that, you know, hey, you need some education on what the law actually is because you can't license a right. So if I have a right to feed somebody, they can't license that, right? They only license it because we volunteer to get licensed. So it's that whole mechanism and how the private membership is, is structured and then the money. How do you deal with the money? So the way that I deal with the money is I don't deal with the money. The trust does. So I set a trust up and the trust deals with the money. The trust takes in the membership agreements or the membership donations and all that stuff and handles all the money. And that's a common law business trust or a Massachusetts trust. And that uh, deals with the private member organization. And I set that all up based on my ministry or my church. And my church is set up. Once my church is set up, now everything is being done according to God, right? And because I have a right under God to do this as my ministry, and I preach the word, which is the truth, whether I'm selling donuts or I'm, you know, uh, putting up templates on to our members for documents for legal stuff or lawful stuff. I mean, that's 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 our business. It's nobody else's business. I have a right to do that. And as long as I'm not out there to the public advertising, hey, come here, pay me this, I'm going to do this for you then it's fair game. So that's why I won't get like too much into detail about what House of Marcus is really doing. Um, but I will say that, you know, for $33 a month, you come into the House of Marcus, you're part of a family. And we, uh, you know, are continually uploading more information and uh, videos and stuff like that just to get people up to speed and to eventually help them with their issues. But we're working on bigger things too that I just don't want to disclose out in the public. Okay, cool. Uh, with reg what, what about people who already have a business license in place? How do you, how do you, can you disconnect from that? And what's, is there a process? And then you just, you keep doing business in the same location? Yeah, uh, I mean, you could, it takes a lot of guts, right? You and I know that it takes a lot of guts, but yes, you would have to dissolve that business, whatever it is, a partnership, an LLC, a limited company, whatever it is. If, as long as it's registered, I would follow the state um, dissolution um statutes so that i could properly dissolve that and then i would close the doors to the public and turn it into a private organization private member club private member organization pma that type of thing they're all the same they're just different titles for the same thing so yeah that that could be done it's going to take guts and uh one of the first things that you really should learn or people should learn is how to respond because they're going to knock on the door they're going to send you a letter they're going to call your phone they're going to try to find out are you functioning uh outside of or are you functioning in accordance with our statutes and no we're not because they don't apply for these reasons but see people respond right away by giving them information right off the bat so um if you don't mind, I will share, you know, how I respond right away. And oh. it, it already sets them on their heels. So the first thing to ask is, 
I'm sorry, uh, I'm not quite sure who you are. I know you say you're from the state and this is like a phone call or at the door. I don't know who you are. Um, do you have a warrant if you're at the door? No, you don't. Okay, great. Can you please cite your authority that says uh, that the information you're asking from me is mandatory for me to give to you? Is it mandatory or voluntary? Those two alone will send them packing because it's not mandatory. It's not mandatory to give them any information. Well, I'm sorry, since you couldn't give me that law, I'm just going to go ahead and shut the door now. You guys have a nice day. We'll see you next time. Okay, if you want to become a member, you're more than welcome to become a member. You just have to sign the agreement. But other than that, we don't have any business with you. Bye. You know, have a nice day. Shut the door. Hang up the phone. Stop giving them information. It's so important. Uh, case in point, the one PMA that I did respond, uh, help respond to the states, they, before they knew me or, or got in touch with me, they responded and they said, uh, we're a 508C1A here in the States is 508C1A is a church and it's uh, accepted from the tax filing, meaning it doesn't have to file for um, tax exempt status, but it's already tax exempt, even though it doesn't have to file. Now, people have in their mind that just because they don't have to file that their government hands off. Well, that's not true. The government is going to test you. All right. So that's what happened. And when the woman got on the phone, she goes, I'm a 508C1A. You're, the state has no jurisdiction. The federal government has no jurisdiction. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. You're overstepping your bounds. You shouldn't say that. Don't tell them what the law is. Let them tell you. So when now after that phone call, they got a letter follow up from the state saying, hey, we're going to come, you know, investigate your premises and all this because you're operating like a school. And they said when we were on the phone, right, they took the words that the woman said and they used them against her. The information. Stop giving them information. We were able to flip that around in our favor, though, by the way that I responded to that letter. That's where I came in, the second uh, response. And they sent a letter back saying, oh, well, we don't want any business with you. You guys have a nice day and haven't bothered them since. So it's about responding is, is, is one of the main defenses, man. Super huge. Don't give information. Stop giving information. You don't owe anybody a name, nothing. That's all private. And there's no law that says that you have to give them that information. None that I've ever seen. I've yeah, been through a that, lot of different. That Miranda laws. warning you guys have in the states is, of course, everything you say can and will be used against you. They never say anything that you will say is going to benefit you in any way. They only say right. it will be against you. So, yes. And there's good videos uh, from lawyers and ex-prosecutors online saying, "Shut up, be quiet, don't say anything, don't talk to police," over and over and over again. So, yes, yep. it's a really important lesson for people to understand. And we've been so trained to respond to authority, to make excuses, to uh, explain ourselves. And we don't have to do that because mm -hmm. they are our servants and yep. we have to have the masters. And that's a big, big emotional and, and mental shift for people to make for sure. Yeah, it's huge. So it is. Uh, I'm glad you said that because it is about you know, uh, changing your life and making these changes uh, and, and training yourself because they're not easy changes to make, even though they sound easy, but you got to actually like rehearse the stuff in your mind and train yourself, you know, especially when you're in a situation where there's an agent at your door or on the side of the road, your heart's racing, you don't know exactly what to say, but your fail safe is, I'm sorry, if the information is not mandatory, then I can't give it to you. That's private. And th then they don't have any statute to back that up. So, they really can't force you to give them information, you know, so. Okay. So you have you have a, a website uh, existing at uh, one URL right now, but you're uh, changing it to the new one, houseofmarcus.org, is that right? Yep. And uh, the existing material that's on the website, it's at privateestatetrust.org, is that right? Yep. And so uh, you're, you're moving house basically, but the house is, is uh, going to have the same contents. Yeah. And so people who want to uh, get your training and access your uh, materials and your forms and, and letters and so on, they can sign up there. Now, I had a look at the website in terms of uh, the sign up process. So just quickly, what is the process for somebody to join your website? Yeah, well, first off, I want to disclose that the website is clunky at best is what I call it. Um, I built it so it doesn't function all that great. And we're having we have a professional building a new one. It's going to be ready um, in December. So it is a little bit weird, like for some reason. And I can't figure out why. 
but people that don't use Firefox can't seem to log in or register. And it's like, as soon as they use Firefox, it works. So I don't know what that is because I'm not a technical guy, but basically what you do is you go in and you, you put your information in at the top, you'll scroll down everything you have to scroll to get to. Um, so when you first get to the register page, it's like, well, where do I register? It's like, well, you gotta scroll down a little bit. So you scroll down and you'll see a login form. That's for people that are already registered. And then you'll see the, um, just below the login form, you will see the membership agreement. And we encourage everybody to read that. So you read the membership agreement. If you agree, you go down the bottom, you sign it, which is a, it's kind of an e-sign type of thing, and then put in your information and we start a, a monthly donation of $33. Once you have set that up, you should have access to the site. Again, some people have a little trouble because of their browsers and stuff. So uh, bear with us. You can submit a ticket under contact us in our ticket at any time. You don't have to be logged into the site. You don't have to be a member. That way, if you're having trouble with it, we can guide you on how we can get you into the site. Once you're in, Firefox is the best thing to use because if you try to download our documents, again, we've noticed that Chrome and Safari, for some reason, have something on them that won't let them download these these templates and these documents. So that's all we ask is that people just be patient with our quirkiness until we get things panned out because we're kind of building this ship as we sail it. So, you know, it's it's a bit of a challenge. Um, but what, what we plan on doing, there's a video in there that tells you where we're going, what we're about and where we're going in the future. So that's a big help because a lot of people want to know, well, what am I getting? You know, and the $33 a month is just a monthly thing. You don't have to pay for six months up front or anything. If you want to cancel, just email us. Hey, I'd like to cancel. We'll cancel everything for you. It's not a big deal. Um, so, you know, but we, we have to have membership because all that stuff is private. And as you know, you know, I don't need to get caught up in any more uh, government issues with them coming at me because the they don't want the information out there. So that's the short and sweet of it as far as trying to log in. Just uh, ask for patience. That's all we ask. No, we'll get okay. there. We we got a beautiful site being developed. Okay, so when, once you're a monthly member, you then have access to the free downloads. Of, like you mentioned, the COVID documents, they're free to members. Um, yeah educational document or uh, materials are all free right. yeah everything's in there and you have a bunch of webinars to bring people up to speed on different subject matter yep yep there's webinars in there there's uh my own templates like i said and and some of those templates there is a fee for for doing certain uh processes we're probably going to wipe most of those clean and zero them out here shortly but we're in a transition period too where you know, even some of the documents I have on there, they're a great educational piece, but I don't know that that's necessarily a process that I'm going to fully continue with. And it's not really a pro. like everybody comes in, what's your process? What's your process? I don't like selling processes. I only can tell you what I do and how I use the documents that I've created and, and have worked for me when I've used them in the way that I've used them. I think what we're all searching for is true freedom to get out from underneath the government thumb. And that is something that a lot of us are working on. Uh, we will go more into detail about that with members. We just won't do that in the public. Right, one of the things that uh, many people who are coming, especially new ones, uh, they want to know it works. They wanna hear some examples of how it's been applied and how it's been successful. Uh, is that something you, I, I know because they're private situations, it becomes much more difficult. The other mm -hmm. thing is because you're dealing with uh, the government who normally creates public records of um, their successes against us, um, they generally walk away. So we don't have, when it's in the private, they generally walk away. So we don't necessarily have as, as easy to access proof of success other than the right. fact that government walking away. Right. Do you have, uh, a collection of stories and feedback from um, members and successful events, so so to speak. I mean, I have some stuff on the YouTube, which is not House of Marcus, by the way. That's a di whole different name. That's REM Private Management. That's where I have some of my videos. So I have stories, but and and I do have other members that can you know vouch for certain things. Uh, but you're not going to find any court cases or things like that that are clear cut. Oh, you, you know, you won, you know, that type of thing. No, like you said, that they will go to great lengths 
to make sure that it all looks good in the public so nobody is none the wiser. Um, but yes, I could I could go on with stories all day long about certain successes. The, the thing is, is I get the same thing like you're asking me, you know, people want to know, am I safe? Am I protected? You know, and unfortunately, without the knowledge, you know, Robert Michael could do everything in the world for you. I could draft up the most phenomenal paperwork in the world, but without the knowledge, you're still not protected because you got to understand how to administrate yourself, how to administrate your business privately with these guys. So the knowledge really, really is super important. You know, it's like you can never get a guarantee from an attorney. Well, why can't an attorney guarantee you an outcome? Because it's impossible. Nobody knows how that judge is going to react or, you know, what the outcome is going to be. It's the same thing for us. Like we cannot guarantee you an outcome and to do so would be a disservice. And, and honestly, I think you may be familiar over all these years as well as I am. You know, I've seen plenty of these guys make people feel warm and fuzzy. This is it. This is the way you do it. This is it. This is it. And people go to jail. And it's like, well, that's not the way clearly because I went to jail. So to me, it's better for me not to promote security other than you are your security. Your knowledge base is your security. We may help you with that security, but that's the most that I think anybody can do until we do have some sort of breakthrough proof that, yes, this is how it gets done every single time. And the result is the same, which we're getting close to, by the way. Um, so until I have that, though, I won't promote that type of outcome. Yeah, and it's really um, largely about application correctly done. Uh, yep. Even if, uh, even if you haven't, even if you haven't got the perfectly correct process, it can mostly be corrected by your attitude and by your words when dealing with it. So. Yep. Um, and that's where a lot of people want a shortcut. They want the easy button. They want the magic piece of paper. And I, I'm I'm hearing a few people talking about it. And I agree that uh, this whole COVID thing, as I said at the beginning, it's waking people up to what the law is and how it affects their lives and how, in effect, we have given away all of our powers to the government, making voluntarily making them the authority in our lives. And people are waking up to the fact that may not be the best dynamic and that we need to be more responsible, be more educated, take power over our lives, not rely on the government for everything and all of our security. And that really is, is the path which people have to be willing to walk. And it's not about the magic paperwork or the magic process. And, no, it's not. And that's really the separating of the wheat from the chaff of who's willing to do the work to grow up and be uh, fully mature, fully liable, fully responsible um, in the world, not of the world. Mm -hmm. Right. So yep. I've, seen, I've seen you going through that in your life and teaching that. And uh, I seeing this as um, aligned with that whole aspect of uh, self-responsibility, education and application. And uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, following up some more on your processes. We're going to talk some more privately about some things I uh, want to talk to you about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to thank you very much for your sharing of this information and if people want to get in contact with you what's the best way to do that they can go to the website uh they're probably not going to get in contact with me directly just because i'm so swamped but they can go to the website to the contact us page and put a ticket in and that, that will have your email in it and all that so that we can respond to you just respond when you go to the ticket make sure you respond to the ticket and not the notification email because you will get an email that says there's a ticket there and somebody replied and some people are responding to the no reply email so you have to actually go back into the ticketing dashboard and reply to the particular ticket so as long as you do that you know regardless we'll get the message we'll get the ticket even if you have to put a new ticket in you know we'll see the old one we'll see it all so that's the way to get a hold of us right now until okay. we get some people that can actually work the phone and all that which is what we're getting to it's it's come we're, we're also by the way um i'm doing educational seminars for private people They're, you don't have to be a member but they have to be under an nda and um, we have a seminar coming up on November 20th in Middletown, uh, New Jersey. And we have one uh, after that in Greenville, South Carolina on November, or sorry, December 5th. And then one after that in Sarasota, Florida on December 11th. And all of that information 
we have a separate um, event coordinator that works with us, and uh, that is on we the people unified dot org, and there's or sorry dot us we the people unified dot us. They're setting everything up because I just don't have the time. So there's a landing page there. You'll see the dates and all. But we will, if you register on our site, obviously we'll be posting that on our website and stuff as well. We just lock those dates in and sign the contract. So uh, I got to get all that advertising up on the on the website. Okay. But if you want, if you want the shortcut, you could just go to we the people unified. Dot us. All right, and uh, I'll get you to send me uh, that information, and I'll post it up on this replay page. So it'll be below this video for everybody who's watching the replay. Um, we, the, we the people unified. Yep, dot US. And spelling counts when you're doing URLs. Yes, <laughs> big time. <laughs> Please don't put House of Marcus M-A-R-C-U-S. You will get a leather making bondage company. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're into that sort of thing, it's up to you, but that's not what we do there. <laughs> well, it is kind of humorous because that is the other side. You are in bondage. Yeah, that is. Absolutely. It's funny. I never even thought of it that way, but you're right. And the bondage site. So which yep. do you want? <laughs> All right. Well, and, and yeah, we could, yeah, we could talk more about that part too, the bondage in uh, maybe another, another uh, episode. Absolutely. Well, thanks very much for the update, for chatting with us. And uh, I encourage people to check out your website and your information. Um, you're one of the guys that like I said, I've, I've uh, known for a long time, stay in touch with and value your uh, friendship connection and your information. So thanks a lot. Thank you, brother. Same here.